Hello everyone. Welcome to Study to Win Education. In this particular lecture of metrology and quality control, I am going to talk on angle gauges. I have already covered a lecture on slip gauges. If you haven't seen or uh, listened it, you can watch it and then you can watch the angle gauges. That will be good. So let's start with the lecture angle gauges. Basically, it is a line. Sorry, it is a end measuring instrument. I have also covered a lecture on difference between the line and end measurements. If uh, you can uh, uh, prefer watching it, this is a end measuring instrument because it takes it takes the help of ends datums to take any measurement. Suppose we have a V block and we wish to measure this angle theta, then you can make use of an angle gauge and measure the angle theta. What you have to do? You have to build a blocks of angle gauges. You have to build a block of angle gauges using different angle gauges from the box as shown in this figure. These are the angle gauges: one, two, three, four, five. There can be different set as available, but we we are specifically going to discuss a three-piece angle gauge set. So these are the one. This is one piece. This second piece like this. There are different angle pieces, and it looks like this, and it has this angle theta. Each angle gauge will have a different angle theta. This will be different theta, and this will be different theta. Like this, there are angle gauges of different angles, and then we can add and remove the angle gauges with the help of uh, ringing. So we have a, a ringing principle, which we have also seen in a slip gauge lecture, that we have to rub the two angle gauges on each other. And when we start feeling a tightness in the rubbing, we have to just twist it around so that there will not be air gap between the two angle gauges, and then there will be a rung together angle gauges so that those those two angle gauges will behave like a one single angle gauge. Here we have angle gauges ranging from different degrees, minutes, and seconds that we will see later in the table. But as of now, we suppose have a two angle gauges. And we want to join it. We use the ringing method. And here is the angle theta that we want to measure. So we have to make use of these different angle gauges and make a an angle gauge set so that it will get fitted in the required angle. And then we have to measure the angle gauges. And then we can conclude that this is the angle of a V block. That means we have to make use of ends of the Uh, measuring instrument and the workpiece workpiece uh, to take the measurement. This is also a try and error method because we have to build the angle gauge blocks and then we have to place it in the V block and check if it is matching with the surface or not. If it is not matching, we have to remove that angle gauge, add one more, and then check if it is really matching or not. This is the way we have to check the angle of any component. So this is basically a try and error method, but accuracy of this instrument is very high. We can get in seconds. We can get the accuracy in seconds. The instruments like protractor, bevel protractor, will have a uh, less accuracy than the angle gauges. So angle gauge is more accurate uh, instrument, but it is time consuming and wear is uh, more and so on. Those points you can see in the lecture of line and end measurement difference. Anyway. Uh, now suppose we have a, a component uh, with we, of uh, which for which we have a angle of uh, uh, let's say thirty um, three degree. So we have a angle gauge set here as shown in the table. Here we have a thirteen piece angle gauges in the block, and we have a various degree angle gauges, various minute angle gauges, and various second angle gauges. We have one degree angle gauge, three degree angle gauge, nine degree angle gauge, twenty seven degree angle gauge, forty one degree angle gauge, and so on. So only these degree angle gauges we having. We have one minute angle gauge, three minute angle gauge, and so on. And we have three second angle gauge, six second angle gauge, and so on. First thing is that angle gauge will look like this. That I hope you already know now. This is the shape of the angle gauge, roughly, and this is the angle it will have, roughly theta. So here, when it comes to the three-second angle gauge or six-second angle gauge, it will generally look like a only a block, and it is very difficult to understand that 
which side this angle is because since it is very uh, less three second is very less tapered will be there and it is difficult to understand that which side actually the angle is here is the case that it is larger angle so we can come to know that this is the angle theta but here in the case it is difficult that's why there will be generally two signs provided on the angle gauge one minus and one plus minus sign will be always on the lower side of the angle and the plus size sign is always on the higher side of the angle so it is easier to detect which side the angle gauge is uh, having the taper or slope so here suppose this is a minus and this is a plus then we can understand that this small degree is three second and so on so this and plus and minus signs are provided for that purpose here if we want to add one angle gauge to the another, we have to match minus sign with the minus and plus sign with the plus sign. That means th this is a 30 degree angle gauge and this is a 3 degree angle gauge. Now we want to become a, we want to make a block of 33 degree. So what you do, you do a ringing in such a fashion that the negative sign of uh, one angle gauge will match with the negative sign of another angle gauge. And then you will get a total of 33 degree. If we uh, put it opposite way, that means plus sign matches with the negative sign then you get a difference that 30 degree minus 3 degree you get a 27 degree angle gauge block this is the angle i am talking about i hope you are uh, getting it this is the angle that is 30 degree sorry 33 degree and here uh, this is the degree that is 27 degree so this is also a 1 degree 27 degree because here we have subtracted it this is way we have to make a use of a angle gauge here one more point error error in slip gauge that we have discussed that one we ring one slip gauge over another and there is always small amount of gap present between the two slip gauge that is generally in five nanometers but uh, and this gap will uh, affect the end uh, dimension of the slip gauge and that's why we limit the use of number clubs we generally uh, limit the uh, minimum number gauge uh, slip gauge that means uh, we generally limit the uh, try to use the less number of slip gauge to making a slip gauge block but that condition is not there in case of angle gauges the reason is uh, there will also be a small air gap present between the two uh, ringed angle gauges but this air gap will not affect the end result that means the resultant angle the reason is there is a small air gap present and which is uniform and that's why this angle gauge will rest little higher than it's supposed to rest but that gap is very much uniform so this particular uh, angle gauge will shift parallel to the uh, its position and so this angle uh, gauge will rest like this and this is the then the resultant angle but this angle will also be a 30 degree, 33 degree because it has shifted parallelly. This gap is uniform, so this angle gauge is shifted parallelly, and then that will not affect the end angle. That is why uh, it doesn't matter that how many angle gauges we put to make uh, uh, angle gauge block, because that error will not affect the resultant angle. But in case of slip gauges, we have to limit the number of uh, slip gauges to the minimum value. But that case is not here in the angle gauge because the air gap between the two angle gauges will not affect the end result or the end value like it was affecting in the slip gauge case now what we will do uh, we will take a exam two examples uh, of making the angle gauge suppose we want to make a angle gauge block of 23 degree 59 minute and 53 second this is the angle block or this is the angle i want but this exact angle is not available in the available angle gauge block we have to build it making the use of these angle gauges different angle gauges first take a uh, 27 degree because nearby 23 degree we have 27 degree angle gauge 27 degree we have to subtract now 3 degree from it subtract 3 degree uh, subtracting in the sense uh, we have to match plus sign of the 27 and degree angle gauge with the minus sign of 3 degree angle gauge then it will get subtracted and the resultant angle of this block is 24 degree but we want 23 degree 59 minute 53 second so simply minus uh, simply minus 6 second 6 second if we do so what we got is a, a 23 degree uh, 59 minute and 54 second this is the value that we will get here 23 degree 
59 minute and 54 second here they have asked the 53 second but we won't be able to reach the 53 second we always get a angle within a plus minus one second accuracy using a 13 piece angle gauge block or set so this is the angle that we can build using this three slip uh, angle gauges now take one more example here suppose i want to build a dimension that is angle of 49 degree 11 minute and 42 second then here i will start this angle gauge set using a 41 degree angle gauge we have to add something because this is 41 and this is 49 so let's add a 9 degree to it so it will become a 50 degree angle gauge block we want 49 something so we have to minus something and let's minus a uh, 1 degree so what we got is now a 49 degree we then add some let's add uh, 9 minute and then add 13 minute sorry 3 minute so what becomes is a uh, 49 degree uh, 12 minute and then minus 9 second sorry we don't have 9 second let's minus 18 second so what remains is 41 degree 9 degree means 50 degree minus 1 that is 49 degree plus uh, 12 minutes so 49 degree 12 minute minus 18 second that is 49 degree 11 minute 42 second we have got here exact but uh, sometimes we get plus or minus one second here and there that is also okay and that is the accuracy of a using an angle gauge this is how you can build the angle blocks using this angle gauge uh, set here we have limitation that if we make addition of these degrees you will come to know that we have only 81 degrees that means we can build a angle gauge anywhere between 0 to 81 degree using a 13 gauge 13 piece angle gauge set suppose you want to increase this range to 90 degree that means what you have to do in this set you have to add one more angle of 9 degree then your range will increase your uh, range of this angle gauge block will increase box will increase from 0 to 90 degree any angle you can make then suppose you want to increase the range to 0 to 180 degree then what you have to do you have to add 180 degree uh, not 180 degree we have to add 90 degree angle gauge to this box and then you can use this angle gauge block anywhere between 0 to uh, 180 degree you can use this angle gauge block then uh, this angle gauge box will become a 15 piece angle gauge box hmm. so uh, i hope you all like uh, you have understood the concept of angle gauge it is very simple and very useful for the example exam if you like this lecture please hit the like button you can share this lecture with your friends and if you are not subscribed to the channel please subscribe it Thanks for watching the video. Have a great day. Thank you.